what to teach kids about sex ed on hot button issues is coming to a head as textbooks again are in the middle of a heated flap. Texas has been behind much of the rest of the country in terms of what type of education students are receiving in the classroom on sex ed. The decision by the Texas State Board of Education on which textbooks schools can use to teach sex ed has become a topic of controversy. What's at stake right now is whether or not Texas students in public schools will receive a comprehensive sex education or not in their health courses. That's the opinion of Jules Mandel, advocacy strategist for the Texas Freedom Network, a nonpartisan group that supports religious freedom and public education. What Texas students are being taught about sex ed has apparently been working, at least in one area. So the state of teen pregnancy in Bear County is improving and it has been since um, at least the last decade. Last year, 2.2% of teenage girls in Bear County had a baby, slightly under the state average. That's down significantly from 3.1% five years ago but it's still well over the national norm of 1.5%. And I do think the higher rates of sex ed in San Antonio schools over the last couple of years has helped our, our uh, teen birth rate overall. The debate now involves potential changes to textbooks related to issues like abortion, sexual orientation, and gender identity. They all meet the new health standards that were painstakingly adopted last year by the board. Experts note that parents ultimately have the final say on what their kids learn. Parents have the right to opt into these curricula. They have the right to opt out even of specific se sections. Right now, a traditional EMT program takes about four months, but this one offered by Acadian only takes seven weeks. The best part, most students who come out of it land a job. From hands-on skills training. I get to go to school full time to textbook learning. And I'm also getting paid to go to school, so that's even better. This advanced EMT course is a lifeline for Acadian Ambulance Service. Frankly, across the industry, tremendous shortage of EMTs and paramedics, not only in Texas, but across the nation. Butch Overhoff says right now the private service is incredibly short-staffed because of the pandemic. The turnover among paramedics and EMTs ranges from 20 to 30 percent annually, according to a survey from the American Ambulance Association. Um, I saw it firsthand. Jennifer Castillo, a former EMT, now teaches the intense and complex program. The goal is to get students from the classroom and onto the streets in just under two months. A regular program takes four months. The condensed class, not a concern. Now you have to sit for the same national standards test that anyone else does. So we, we would do the students a disservice and ourselves a disservice if we didn't make sure we covered every aspect of the training. Because in those seven weeks, you are going to be responding to calls. You're going to be doing normal transfers. While in school, students will earn $11 an hour. And I'm really excited to just have that adrenaline and, I don't know, help people really help. And the success rate of this advanced program is 85%. That's compared to the national average, which is just 50%. Hey, this year, ransomware attacks triggered gas shortages on the East Coast and even crippled a local school district. Now, these attacks could hit your office, your school, even hospitals and government agencies. So News 4 troubleshooter Emily Bacham is finding out how prepared San Antonio is for a possible cyber attack. I think about it 24 seven. Patsy Boozer is the city of San Antonio's chief security officer in charge of keeping its data safe and really keeping every single city service up and running. We maintain our servers. We do our patching. We we watch, we monitor alerts. Constant vigilance against a potential ransomware attack when hackers get into an organization's computer system and encrypt the data. It puts you into a denial of service, meaning you can't get into any of that data anymore. More and they're holding it ransom. And that's the whole point. They want money. Yes, they want money. The FBI does not support paying ransom because there are no guarantees you'll get your data back. But that hasn't stopped victims from paying up. This year, a national meat supplier paid $11 million, an oil pipeline $4 million. And here at home, the Judson School District paid more than half a million. There are two local government agencies who store a lot of your personal information and who you rely on every single day, the power company and the water company. San Antonio Water System told the troubleshooters, SAWS recognizes the evolving threats around cybersecurity and works diligently to address them. At CPS Energy, Chief Legal and Ethics Officer Shanna Ramirez explains the risk is uncomfortable and very real. There are cyber criminals, nation states, 
and hacktivists that spend all of their time figuring out how to get at sensitive information like customer data, like how we operate our energy grid. She says CPS Energy uses guidelines from federal agencies like Homeland Security to protect the grid and your data. The critical thing you have to think about is your ability to recover. So we really have focused on what we need to do in terms of backing up our systems, educating our workforce on what would happen if this occurred. The troubleshooters learned just this week CPS Energy, SAWS, the city and federal agents all trained for a potential attack. To practice a number of scenarios that might occur to cause problems to our grid, there is a huge cyber component to that. As for you at home, you're part of the safety chain. So wherever you browse the internet, it's up to you to keep your antivirus software updated. Don't click on any suspicious links. That's actually the number one way ransomware can infect your system.